And the polls have just closed in Georgia. Of the three states right now voting on the Democratic side, Georgia closes at 7. We are waiting any minute now, any second now, potentially. We're expecting the results to start coming in. And, you know, obviously with Biden having really no opposition here, you assume, and based on all the results we've seen in other primaries, that this will be an overwhelming and swift victory for Joe Biden. And if you see that with the early results that come in, those delegates could be allocated very quickly. And Georgia has 108 of them. So it's very possible that in the next few minutes, as we start to get results from Georgia, Joe Biden will qu quickly wrap up the 99 that he needs to clinch the nomination. And again, you could just see that would put him over 1968. That would make him uh, officially, I mean, it will, come, it will become truly official at the convention this summer, but he will have pledged delegates bound in their commitments uh, more than enough to give him the first ballot nomination. So we're waiting on Georgia for the Democrats. We are also waiting for it. I can show you on the Republican side here where Donald Trump is sitting at 1,089 delegates, 1215, the magic number on the Republican side. Trump, 126 short. Now, he's not going to get it in Georgia. There are only 59 delegates for the Republicans at stake in Georgia. Mississippi will close at 8. There are 40 there. So Trump will not get it in the early hours tonight. Most likely, it'll be 11 o'clock Eastern time. Washington State, the polls will close then. There are 43 delegates at stake there. And so likely, in that 11 o'clock hour, Donald Trump will cross the threshold, and you'll have both major party candidates reaching their delegate magic numbers, as I just check in with Georgia again here, reaching their delegate magic numbers tonight, locking in the pledge delegates they need to win their party's nominations on the first ballot. And by the way, we went back and we did do a little research on this. If that is indeed what happens tonight before midnight, and I stress the term before midnight, then it will actually set the stage mathematically for the longest general election campaign in modern American history. There would be 240 days from now until the election on November 5th, and both candidates would have clinched their party's nominations. Uh, the earliest that's happened before, there's actually a couple elections where it happened 239 days before the general election. So if it happens before midnight tonight, this will be a 240-day campaign from this point forward. And that would be a matter of some trivia here, because a lot of folks have been prepping, obviously, for a Biden-Trump race a lot longer than just tonight. But in terms of both candidates actually locking down those numbers, uh, that could come. Uh, if it comes before midnight, it will be the longest general election <laughs> campaign ever, mathematically, at least by that metric. So again, uh, the polls have closed in Georgia. We just ex we expect uh, this this map to begin lighting up. I know Georgia can be a little slow in the early going, uh, but we will see because any results that come in here, uh, if they're what we expect, it could be very quick in terms of Biden being declared the winner here and getting those delegates and becoming the Democratic nominee by numbers. If Chris, see, Steve, this is why I love you, because you anticipate my every question, because that's literally what I, what I was going to ask you, is, is would this be the earliest uh, that we've locked in? I mean, it is unusual, because essentially you have sort of a dual incumbent race, right? You've got a sitting president running against a former president, and it's very early. So you anticipated uh, me. So anticipate this as well, my friend. If it comes in, if you've got a call, wave your hands in the air. Somehow through the magic of TV, oh, we will see you, and I, we'll Joy, come back. I, oh, wait a minute. I, I, I can tell you, we just got a we just got our first report here, Go and for it. Uh, this is from Floyd County. Uh, this is it, it's 66 votes. Uh, I just sometimes this precipitates uh, when you see the first one. Sometimes you get a couple more right away. So I just I, let's I give pause here for a few seconds to see if anything lights up. It doesn't. Nothing immediately here, but we're starting to get it. And like I said, I mean, look, it's 100 percent, 66 votes, but Biden getting every single one of them. So it probably will not take much from these counties for that pattern to be established um, yeah. and this to happen. So, yes, I will absolutely uh, flag you as soon as we uh, as soon as we see that. Really quickly, before I let you go, um, Stephen, we're going to let you go for long, but how quick of a, of a counting state is Georgia? Yeah, it, I mean, if this were a competitive election tonight, we, it would it would take a while. Um, that first, we got a little bit more here too. Uh, Pulaski County. Uh, so we've okay. Now we've got a third county coming in here. They seem quick. Yeah, and we're, again, now 93 percent for Biden, 100 percent for Biden, 98 percent for Biden. So I mean, you're already just seeing. Obviously, there was no suspense. He's going to win it. Sure. And, and is he going to get that 95 percent plus? Then just the way the delegates work on the Democratic side to tell you what they're looking for here. The the number that's Biden's enemy here, just from the delegate standpoint, is 15 percent. If any of the other candidates on the ballot are getting 15 percent, 
they can start collecting delegates. Uh, obviously, in these early returns here, nobody is even remotely in the ballpark of 15 percent. So that pattern would then establish Biden, uh, sure. put him in position to win all delegates. Uh, again, 108 at stake here. He needs 99 of them. And, I, you know, if that happens, he crosses the magic number. So if you can't tell him, I'm, I'm stretching a little bit for time here because we did get those three and I'm, I'm yeah. waiting on more. It can, it can be a little slow in Georgia, I know, in the early going and, and, and a little sporadic. But like I said, um, certainly based well, on these, uh, certainly based on these first, now we got a few more here. Sure. Again, 96, 95, 93, 100 percent unanimous uh, in Floyd County, 98 percent in Pulaski. And I think it, there it is, Joy. The stretching has paid off. Joe there Biden, our decision desk, has just projected will win Georgia. And let's go back now to, and there it is. He has now crossed with that. He gets the necessary delegates. We've just allocated him uh, 104 of them. And so he has now crossed the number. One, uh, 1969, uh, 1968 was needed. Biden now at 1973. He's the presumptive nominee. Those are pledged delegates. Their commitments will be binding. So Joe Biden has the necessary delegates to win the Democratic nomination on the first ballot. To the extent there was any remaining suspense, <laughs> it has been eliminated. Joe Biden, the presumptive nominee. And it took all of eight minutes. Steve Kornacki, the Kornackster, as we like to call him, even not in khakis, always effective and bringing us the info we need. Thank you, my friend. Much appreciated. All right, joining me now is, as it turns out, Democratic Senator from Georgia, Raphael Warnock. Senator, uh, your state, it is kind of poetic, is it not? Uh, it was Georgia that delivered the two Senate seats that gave Democrats back the majority, yours being one of the two, Senator Ossoff being the other one. It was your state that so enraged Donald Trump that he uh, committed acts which have now lent, led him to felony charges in your state. It was your state where he said he just needed to find 13,000 odd votes and asked your secretary of state to do that for him, which he did not. And so there's a lot of poetry here. What do you make of the eight minute suspense <laughs> for Georgia delivering Joe Biden officially the nomination, or at least making him the presumptive nominee. Well, good evening, Joy. Great to be with you. And uh, although I'm in D.C., yeah, let me say welcome again to Battleground Georgia. Uh, the country should know by now that Georgia shows up. And there is poetry and power that it was Georgia that's pushing him now uh, over the finish line. He is our official nominee. We know that Georgia literally saved the whole country uh, in 2021, sending its first African-American senator and its first Jewish senator to the United States Senate from Georgia in one fell swoop. And if that had not happened, let me just give you one point. Uh, Katanji Brown Jackson would not be sitting on the Supreme Court. And so Georgia did this on January 5th. As you point out, we saw a violent insurrection pushed and uh, forward by uh, this uh, ex-president uh, on January 6th. And in a real sense, that's what this election is about. Uh, are you going to choose the America of January 5th that would send a kid who grew up in public housing, the first African-American senator from Georgia, to the Senate, and a Jewish uh, kid also uh, uh, mentored by John Lewis? Or are you going to give in to the forces of resentment and revenge and retribution uh, that guide Donald Trump. I choose January 5th. I choose an America that embraces all of us.